Rightio. Now, to be fair, I'm just going to give you Neil's statement. Okay? This is his evidence. This is the signed sworn affidavit. Well, not signed sworn. This is the non signed, non sworn, non witness um, statement of facts from Neil Winterbottom. This was supplied by the prosecution upon my request. Right. Um, statement of Neil Winterbottom. Age, doesn't say. Date statement taken. 2nd of February. Okay. Bear in mind, the incident occurred on the 21st of November. Okay. Sorry for the dry face, I've got dry skin. Occurred on the um, 21st of November. So this statement was taken two and a half months after. Coincidentally enough, this statement was taken about two weeks after I lodged a, um, an IPCA complaint about him running over my foot. But anyway, let's move on. Time, 5.20 at night. No doubt he's done a full day shift by then. Location, Walkworth Police Station. I, Neil Winterbottom, state that my full name, I, am, uh, that, oh, sorry, I, Neil Winterbottom, state that is my full name. I am a senior con police constable stationed at Walkworth, a member of the Highway Patrol Unit. On Friday, the 21st day of November 2014, I was on routine patrol duties in the Waimaku area. At the time, I was driving an unmarked Highway Patrol vehicle and wearing full police uniform. At this time, I was on Mirawai Road, stationary opposite the Waimaku Primary School in an attempt to detect speeding vehicles near the school. I observed a westbound blue Mitsubishi vehicle, registration FAN394, travel. I repeat, travel past my position at what appeared to be in excess of the posted 50 km an hour speed limit. I drove after this vehicle and checked its speed at 75 km an hour by radar. The device used was a Stalker DSR radar with a readout unit number of 44894 and an antenna number of 78353. The unit was in calibration at the time. I have been using these devices for 25 years and I am a certified user and instructor. Amazing. I observed this vehicle drive past a clear and visible set of speed limit signs prior to the speed being checked. The vehicle was stopped on Mirawai Road by flashing lights and siren, but due to the unsafe location, the driver was asked to move into nearby Taha Road, which he did. Page 2. I approached the driver and recognised him as a person. I had previously dealt with, but I was unsure of his personal details. I noticed that the driver was using a video recorder and appeared to be filming me. A little addendum there, a little therefore, if he's going to mention it in a statement, it should be admissible as evidence, should it not. He's bringing it up, not me. Filming me. I asked the driver to produce his driver's license for inspection. The driver was very uncooperative and ignored my requirement to produce his driver's license. The driver was asked numerous times to produce his driver's license, but at each time he was very obstructive and uncooperative. He was also warned on a number of occasions that if he did not produce his driver's license, he would be charged for the offence of failing to produce his driver's license. He continued to be very obstructive and uncooperative. He was also obstructive when I asked him for his personal details. Let's not repeat ourselves, shall we? At this point, I returned my to my patrol vehicle to make a number of checks as to his identity. But I thought he knew me. 
and address so that I could issue the speeding and failing to produce license notice. The inquiries made is established the driver's name. I didn't see any of them. The driver's name is Mark Donald Eric Keane of 128 Fletcher Road, Waimaku, with a date of birth of the 6th of the 7th, 1972. After completing the notice, I returned to the King's vehicle, but he had wound his driver's window. To avoid any further interaction with the defendant, God, he's calling me all these names, I placed the notice under his windscreen wiper and returned to my patrol car. The defendant got out of his vehicle and placed the notice under the patrol car's wiper blade. He was still filming with his camera, again to avoid interaction. Did I stop him? With the defendant, I drove away. Later, that morning, I posted the notice to the defendant's home address. I also swear that the information contained within the summary of facts is true and correct, to the best of my knowledge and belief. I confirm the truth and accuracy of the statement. I make the statement with the knowledge that is to be used in court proceedings. I am aware that it is an offence to make a statement that is known by me to be false or intended by me to mislead. I'll repeat that. I am aware that it is an offence, whatever that is, to make a statement that is known by me to be false or intended by me to mislead. Is that right, Neil? Good to see you put your name behind that. Good to see you dated it. Good to see that it was witnessed. Not. James Gallagher is apparently saying that this wonderfully written fictional story doesn't need to be signed or sworn. So there's a little bit of inequality right there. So the only way that I can get some sort of remedy, justice, is to go through all of the bullshit that you guys have watched me post and put up to this date. And there's a little bit more before next Tuesday that I'm posting. A really interesting conversation with Mr. Carl Lewins. There's some, um, you know, the only way is I have to lower myself to being a you, which is, in other words, just representing through that name or that person, Mr. Keane, within their society to try and seek some sort of remedy or justice. We know that everything that he said in this piece of paper is, a, is an interesting perception of what happened that day. He's entitled to his opinion, but he can't pass that off as fact. Not when you guys, if you've been following watched the original interaction as to what happened, and no otherwise. So, Tuesday, we show up, I stand there, I shut my fucking mouth, I let them do all of their pomp and ceremony and carry on, and then when it comes to my turn to speak, then I'll be asking for Neil, or require and wishing, if not demanding, for Neil to be placed on the stand and to be sworn in, for appellant review, should it be required. I'll expect him to stand by every word that he's written here, or to justify otherwise. And I want some answers. I want some justice. Because I don't care what fucking rule that man believed I had broken. It didn't justify him using that vehicle. And yes, it was a vehicle. He was using it in commercial capacity. So it was a vehicle. 
rolling that vehicle onto my foot. Whether he intentionally did it or not, you know, some cars, when they're parked and stationary and the air conditioning kicks in, it does that little over-rev. That may have happened. I'm not arguing whether he did it intentionally or not. I'm arguing the fact that my foot was run on, intentionally or otherwise, and no one is taking responsibility for that. That is where I draw the line. You do not get to hurt your fellow man and not be held accountable. And it's a moral thing. I don't give a flying fuck about money. This isn't about money for me. If I was worried about money, I wouldn't have spent probably the hundreds of dollars I've spent in petrol, photocopying costs, hours, doing all of this over a speeding ticket. I'm doing this to see what happens, to see the correct procedures and to get the correct answers and to try and see if there's anything called justice in this world. After this, I'm going to be going straight after the jugular of the IPCA. They haven't got back to me. They haven't investigated my complaints in regards to Bill Russell and his mismanagement of some apparent investigation where he didn't even investigate the man or investigate the victim. So we'll deal with him next. But at this point, we'll deal with this. Have a good day, guys. Keep you posted. Peace. Much love to you all.